Hey everybody, we're getting ready to go Facebook Live. I'm gonna put my phone on vibrate uh, and I'm going to share this on the church Facebook page. Bible trivia, Bible trivia, 6.30 p.m. here on this Labor Day. Um, my name is Michael Prettyman, if you are joining. And uh, we have one viewer. Hopefully I went public with this and I'm not just sharing it to like one person. All right, let me find this so I can share it to the church Facebook page. We have two people watching so far. Um, let me find this. There it is. All right, I'm going to hit share, and I am going to share it. The sharing public. Good. So uh, I'm going to share it to the... Well... Hello, Cherry. Let's see here. Got to find out how to share this to the page. It always comes up different, it seems like. I'll just share it there. Share it on your page. Share it on Grace Works Church. And share now. So, getting ready to do some Bible trivia. Um, I don't have any food on me tonight. Can you believe it? I'm, I'm foodless. Uh, normally, I have some food here that I'm munching on just to kind of entertain you guys a little bit. But no food tonight. So, uh, anyway, all right. I've got it shared. I can shut this now. And I can focus on Bible trivia. And tonight, all right, Chip's ready. And uh, Chip, I have a feeling you're going to have this one good to go, man. These are some uh, popular scripture references, uh, kind of something like that with the title. Um, just things that um, <clears throat> whenever you hear the verse, it automatically, tri when, when I read the scripture verse, it automatically triggers, hey, that's, you know, whatever, Exodus 13, 22, or whatever. So, I'm going to read some popular scripture references, and uh, this trivia may be a little shorter than normal tonight. I don't know. We'll see. It may end up going long. But please, hit the share button. Hit that share button. You never know. That's a, that, hey, that's a good one to just kind of throw out there, Chip, just in case that one might be in there and you've already got one of the answers right. You know, just start throwing them out there, and you can see, uh, see if you were on the same uh, wavelength. Because when I was doing this, I actually did this one just kind of off the uh, top of my head, uh, uh, scripture verses that I knew that were popular to me, and I know they're very popular, but hit that share button. Uh, when you guys share this out, it gets out there exponentially. It makes a huge difference, I notice, uh, when you guys share it as opposed, as opposed to whenever I'm just doing it on my own. So, anyway, our Bible trivia tonight is popular scripture references, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started here uh, so you guys can get back to your homemade ice cream churns or whatever you might be doing this uh, Labor Day. And uh, so, Question number one, or scripture verse number one. I'm going to read the scripture verse to it to you. You tell me where it is in the Bible. You can put the book. You can put the book chapter. You can put the book chapter and verse. Uh, whatever you want to do. And by the way, I some of these may be written verbatim. I didn't. I, always, I didn't do them verbatim. Some of them I just wrote them out. And uh, hopefully you guys can find it. So number one. Where would this scripture verse be found in the Bible? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Anybody know where that is? Ask Google, ask Siri if you don't know. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, you know, there may be more to that verse, but I'll just stop there. So, but I think that is it. Where would you find that in the Bible? Bill Neal says Genesis. That is a very good guess since that is the beginning of the Bible. Bill O'Neill says Genesis. Anybody else? Anybody want to even get a little more crazy and see if you can find out what chapter and verse it is? Oh, Cherry says Genesis 1-1. Chip says Genesis 1-1. And you guys fact check me when I give you the answer because I actually was doing this off the top of my head. So we'll have to see if I, I've, I've got it right. So verse number one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The answer is Genesis and Genesis 1-1 to be specific. So if you said Genesis or Genesis 1-1, you are correct. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-1. Verse number 2. The verse number 2. So verse number 2 is, you ready for this? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And there's more to that. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Does anybody know what... Uh, book, what chapter, maybe what verse you would find that in in the Bible in the beginning. God, uh, I'm sorry, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Sorry, <laughs> I'm losing it. The only else has John 3 16. Cherry says John 3 16. Chip says John 3 16. 
At one point, John 3.16 was one of the most popular uh, scripture verses in the whole Bible. And uh, John 3.16, anybody else? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Anybody else? And I know some of you are probably still, you know, this is getting out there uh, to you. And you'll probably answer by the time I already give the answer. And if you said John 3.16, you are correct. John 3.16, good job, guys. Verse number three. Verse number three. We're doing popular scripture references in the Bible. And, uh, and hit that share button. Share it out there so more people can see this trivia. These are popular scripture references in the Bible as I grew up anyway. So hit that share button. And uh, you can give me the uh, book. You can give me the book and chapter. You can give me the book, chapter, and verse if you know it. But here is the fourth verse uh, for popular scripture references trivia. Um, number four. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, some of these may not be verbatim. They might be the Michael translation. But uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Where would you find that in the Bible? Where would you find that in the Bible? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Peggy says, John 1.1. 1, 1. Chip says, John 1.1. 1, 1. Bill Neal says, 1 John, but um, he probably meant John 1. <laughs> so John chapter 1, John 1, 1. Um, Cherry says John 1, 1. If you don't read the Bible much, there actually is, uh, Bill Neal, I'm sure, meant John, John 1. There actually is a 1 John in the Bible that is different than John 1. So uh, somebody who probably doesn't know the Bible very well, I mean, it'd be, it'd be why, why is there a 1 John and why is there a John 1? I don't get it, but... Uh, if you said John 1, 1, you are correct. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with, or in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. That was question number four in our popular scripture references trivia. And uh, <coughs> so um, we're going to move on to number five. Number five. Um, I think you guys are going to get this. You can give me the, um, and once again, please hit the share button. If you're just joining us, hit your share button real quick so it can get out there. Uh, when you hit that share button, it goes out there exponentially. So uh, here we go. Question number five or verse number five, and you can just tell me. I'm just going to kind of give you the beginning of this, and you tell me where this is found. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Where would you find that in the Bible? You can give me the book. You can give me the book and chapter. You can give me the book, chapter, and verse if you know it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is question number five or verse number five in popular scripture references uh, in the Bible trivia. So uh, popular scripture references. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Cherry says Psalm 23. Bill Neal says Psalm 23. Anybody else? Peggy says Psalm 23. Chip says Psalm 23. Paula says Psalm 23, verse 1. So, if you said Psalm 23, you are correct. And then you know what, Paula? I need to, I don't even, I was kind of writing this out, and that may just be verse 1 only or part of verse 1. But uh, so, Psalm 23, always fact check, man. It gives you, this is kind of this whole idea of this Bible trivia is to kind of uh, provoke you into opening your Bible or opening your Bible app and uh, double checking me, making sure that I'm telling you right. Welcome to Bible Trivia. If you're just joining uh, joining us, uh, we do the 6.30 every Monday night. And tonight our topic is just popular scripture references in the Bible. And we just did ver our fifth verse in the Bible. What I'm doing is I'm giving the verse and you guys are telling me where we find it in the Bible. So I'm going to the sixth verse here. You can give me the, uh, you can give me the, uh, book. You can give me the uh, book and chapter. You can give me the book, chapter, and verse if you want. But here's number six. Um, and this one may not be verbatim, but love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I'm actually looking for one in particular here, but there actually could be several answers to this one. Where would you find that in the scriptures? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Where would you find that in the scriptures? If you, you can give me a, a, Bill says Matthew. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Cherry says Matthew 22. 
Anybody else with a book, chapter, verse? This is kind of a trick question in a way because you can actually find this multiple times in the Bible. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> anybody else? And if you've already answered with Matthew, does anybody else know another book where you can find this in the Bible? I'll give you a hint. This is the greatest commandment in the Bible. The greatest commandment. So, anybody else with an answer? We have Matthew 22, and I'll go ahead and tell you, I believe you guys are correct with Matthew 22. You can also find that in Mark chapter 12. Uh, and you might be able to find it in some of the other Gospels too. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the Gospels. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But that is written in Matthew and in Mark. Maybe in Luke and John, I did not look that up. But also, it is one of the Ten Commandments, I believe. Fact check me on that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, all your strength. The greatest commandment, the Ten Commandments. Um, I believe that is one of the Ten Commandments. Double check me on that. Fact check me. Uh, Jesus was asked by someone, what is the greatest commandment? And that's what Jesus told the person. Love the Lord your God. Hey, thank you, Cherry. Deuteronomy 6. So that does confirm that it is one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, great. You guys are helping me out here. I mean, you're making my you're making my job easy. All right. Uh, question number seven, verse number seven, and our popular scripture reference is Bible trivia tonight. Please hit your share button. Take a moment right now to hit that share button and share it out on your page. But this is verse number seven. I'm looking for uh, the the scripture, uh, the book, the book, the chapter, and the verse if you can. Uh, number seven. Rejoice always, or rejoice evermore. That's the whole verse. Rejoice always, or rejoice evermore. This one's a tricky one. If you type that into your Google search engine, it'll probably tell you. If you type it in as rejoice evermore, rejoice always, different translations uh, say it. Always rejoice, rejoice always, rejoice evermore. Uh, we might as well because we got a lot to rejoice about. Today was a fantastic day. I'm rejoicing about this beautiful day and that beautiful cross behind me. That's the reason I can rejoice evermore. So, uh, Bill says, I think he meant Proverbs. Unless that is in the Catholic Bible, adverbs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anybody else with a, a, a guess on where you might find rejoice always, rejoice evermore? Well, which by the way, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 is what Chip says. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 Peggy says, and if you said 1 Thessalonians 5.16, you are correct. And by the way, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 is the second shortest book, uh, uh, Bible verse in the Bible. It is, in words, it's equal to the shortest verse in the Bible, but it has more letters, so it makes it the second. So, Question number eight. Question number eight. Verse number eight. Tell me where to find this in the Bible. Um, uh, you can tell me the book. You can tell me the book chapter, book chapter, and verse. Here we go. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Where might you find that in the Bible? And that could be in a couple of places, but there's one that's very popular that I think you guys are going to come up with. Once again, this is popular scripture references, Bible trivia tonight. Uh, just some popular scripture references in the Bible. And uh, so we're just uh, doing that, kind of refreshing our memory, helping us, giving us uh, uh, some motivation to open up our Bibles. I know it helps me when I'm doing this trivia to at least be quoting scripture in my mind or going through scripture. Uh, so anybody, uh, anybody, Romans 10, 13. Romans 10, 13 is what Cherry says. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Cherry says Romans 10.13. Anybody else? Romans 10.13 by Cherry Peggy says Romans 10.13. Anybody else? Y'all hit that share button. Share this out there so more people can see this later on in the week. Sorry I don't have Bella here tonight. She's way more entertaining than me. Paula says Romans 10. Anybody else? Anybody else? Chip says Romans 10.13. You know what? I don't have one of the ones in here that I meant to ask, but we'll come back to it. I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, you are correct if you said Romans 10, 13. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we're going to get a verse, our ninth verse here, our ninth verse of the night uh, for popular scripture references. The ninth verse is, For all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Uh, does anybody know where that scripture reference is? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Where might you find that in the scripture references? You can tell me a chapter, or you can tell me a book, you can tell me a book and chapter, or you can tell me a book, chapter, and verse, if you know it. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, or Romans 3.23, Paula says. Chip says Romans. Peggy says Romans 3.23. Anybody else? Anybody else? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Cherry says Romans 3.23, and I know some of you are probably still answering, and the correct answer is... Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, fallen short of the glory of God. Now, here's one, uh, question number 10, and I'm going to add an 11th one because I meant to ask one that I can't believe I forgot to write down here. Um, the kids have done this one in church. Whatever you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Where might you find that in the Bible? We're doing popular scripture references in the Bible. And um, though we're on our 10th one right now, our 10th verse. Whatever you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Where might you find that in the Bible for popular scripture references in the Bible? Uh, that's our trivia for tonight. Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Some of you are probably singing that song in your head right now, because there's a song that kind of goes along with that. Anybody, anybody? Chip says Colossians 3.23. Anybody else? Anybody else with a guess? Anybody else? Cherry says 1 Corinthians 10.31. Peggy says Romans 10.31. Anybody else? Whether therefore you eat or drink, Hello, Mom. Hello, Dad. Hello, Suzanne. That's my sister, Suzanne Hagland. She used to be a pretty woman, and now she's Suzanne Hagland. So, she still is a pretty woman, but uh, <laughs> she has a different last name now. So, uh, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. The answer is 1 Corinthians 10.31. Yes, Peggy, it is 1 Corinthians 10.31. 1 Corinthians 10.31, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God, or whatever you eat or drink, uh, do it all to the glory of God. And uh, so, now here's the one, I can't believe that I forgot to write this one down, uh, so I'm going to have to do this one off the top of my head, and you guys will have to correct me if I'm wrong, you'll help me out here. It says, um, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, or I can do all things through Christ's strength. That's kind of the premise of the verse. I mean, it probably says it different in different translations, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Anybody know what scripture reference that is? I'm sure Chip Liner has used that one many times in uh, his coaching days, and uh, we all have used it, and uh, it's something great to hang on to. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Where might you find that in uh, the scriptures? Once again, guys, hit that share button. Uh, this is our last question before our bonuses uh, on popular scripture references in the Bible. Uh, Chip says Romans 8, 28. Anybody else with a guess? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Cherry says Philippians 4, 13. Philippians 4, 13. Anybody else? Um, our popular scripture references tonight is our Bible trivia. And... Uh, uh, once again, this is uh, Chip says Philippians 4.13. Once again, this is just to provoke you to open your Bible, provoke you in a good way, not in a bad way. Yes, Peggy, Philippians 4.13. So if you guys said Philippians 4.13, you are correct. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, uh, that was kind of the 11th question that I forgot to write down. Yes, Paula. And uh, please hit that share button once again so we'll get it out there to different people. Here's my bonus question. I'm going to reverse one on you. I'm going to do a little reverse thing for you here. So instead of giving you the verse and you tell me, uh, Suzanne Phillips, yes, Suzanne is correct. Uh, instead of me giving you the verse and reading it to you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the verse reference and you tell me what it says. So anybody know what John 11.35 says? John 11.35. And I will give you a hint. It is the shortest verse in the Bible. 
There is another verse that is only two words long. This is only two words long, but the reason this one is the shortest is because it has fewer letters. We did the second shortest verse earlier, rejoice evermore or rejoice always, but this one is John 11.35. Does anybody know what John 11.35 says? John 11.35, your hint is that it is the shortest verse in the Bible, and Bill says Jesus wept. Cherry says Jesus wept. Chip says Jesus wept. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? John 11.35 says... And I know that you guys are probably still answering. Paula's answering. I know I know my mom's going to have one in here. Dave says Jesus wept. Dave, I tell you what, Dave can run like the wind. I go running every now and then. I'll run to David while I'm out running, and he just runs me in the ground. It's good to see you, David. <laughs> uh, Pat says great scripture trivia. I'm like, thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. It's good to kind of hit our uh, verses, you know, popular uh, scripture references. John 11.35 says... Jesus wept. You guys are correct. And by the way, Dave, it's a good thing you got that. Dave is a pastor, and uh, he's the fastest pastor I know, <laughs> especially like setting age records and everything else. I mean, he is a great, a great distance runner. So uh, it's good to see you, Dave. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, I've got one more bonus question for you guys here that is an interesting uh, uh, question here. It's a true or false statement. So you can tell me true or false. All right, here we go. So true or false, Matthew 17, verse 21 is omitted from the New Living Translation, but it is in the King James Translation. Matthew 17, 21 is omitted from the New Living Translation, but it is in the King James Translation. True or false? Matthew 17, 21 is omitted from the New Living Translation, but it is in the King James Translation. Is that a true or false statement? By the way, hit the share button, guys. Share this out there. Uh, the chip says that is true. Hit that share button. Um, the more that you guys share this, the more people will see it, and maybe it'll provoke them to open up their scripture, and you never know uh, when people open up the scripture. Uh, it uh, can be rather revealing in a good way and uh, true. Great to see you too, Dave. <laughs> and Dave says true. Cherry says true. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? The question was true or false. Matthew 17, 21 uh, is omitted from the New Living Translation, but is in the King James Version. And the answer is true. If you said true, you are correct. If you ever go to your Bible app and you bring up Matthew 17, you'll see it goes, you know, verse 19, verse 20, verse 22. <laughs> if you're looking in the New Living Translation, if you look in the King James Version, it goes 19, 20, 21, 22. Uh, and you should ask maybe Bill or Tony sometime about that. Um, they're, whenever these guys get together and they translate the Bible, there are several manuscripts that they, uh, original manuscripts that they translate from, and uh, different translations uh, have some verses that other translations don't have. And uh, some people think that the King James is it, you know what I mean? But it was just a bunch of guys translating, and um, uh, some other translations don't have some. There's something like uh, 13, 15, 18 verses uh, in some of the Bibles that the King James has that... Uh, that other ones don't have. And I'm sure other Bibles have other things, but the translators, when you're translating something, if somebody's translating what I'm saying into Spanish, if you had nine guys translating, you might have nine different uh, translations going on. So uh, that just happens when uh, that's going on. Um, yes, it wasn't in the original manuscripts, I think, as Chip is, uh, um, and so uh, it's interesting. Those, those types of things are interesting to kind of come across. Uh, so anyway, you might want to look at that, Google that sometime. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Matthew 17, 21 is omitted from the New Living Translation, uh, but it is in the King James Version. And to keep some continuity, uh, what the New Living Translation did is they just skipped over verse 21 so that 22 would line up in 23, you know, in the Bibles, in the different Bibles as you're looking at it. So anyway, there you go. There's just some Bible trivia, some popular scripture references. Please hit the share button before uh, you, before we uh, sign off here. But thank you all for joining tonight. It's good to uh, see you guys even online here. And uh, 
trying to think if there's anything else I was going to mention to you. We're going to have our midweek uh, uh, Wednesday at 1130 uh, on the Grace Works Church page, 1130 a.m. We'll do a Facebook Live. Um, and uh, this Sunday, this Sunday, spread the word. We are trying to get back to some type of a routine. And this Sunday, we are planning on coming back to Grace Works Church inside a 9 a.m. service and a 1030 a.m. service. And uh, if you look at the newsletter from last week, and we'll have a schedule in there this week as well, we are back at uh, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. inside. The children are going to have a 10.30 uh, children's church. Uh, they won't be having that at 9 a.m., only at 10.30 a.m. So uh, 9 or 10.30 this Sunday morning inside. That's hopefully going to be our new routine. And uh, then our Bible studies are starting back. They've got different weeknights that they're meeting. The only thing we're doing at church on Sunday morning is just having our worship services at 9 and 10.30 a.m. So look at our newsletter. Uh, you can even go to our church Facebook page and the newsletter's in there. You can click on it and see I wrote an article last week. So check that out. And please spread the word about that schedule. We've got to get that out there. I know, I'm, nobody's happier than me and Tony and Bill that we're going to get a little bit of routine. And we're praying that uh, things can stay routine and we don't have to do something like go outdoor again. Or I mean, it was fun going outdoor and everything. But uh, uh, thank you, Dave. Thanks for hitting that share link. I appreciate it, man. So, and you guys share this out, and uh, I'm going to let you go, and uh, I hope you have a good night. I'm going to have a w quick word of prayer, and then we'll roll here. So, God, I thank you that we can come here tonight, and uh, that we can remember these scripture references. And, God, I pray, God, as we read scripture, and as we open the Bible, and even look at these scripture references, I pray for myself, God, that these things would just stick with me, and that every day, as even as I regurgitate words and I'm making comments on people's uh, social media and everything else, God, that you would lead those words, that it would be scripture coming out of my fingers and out of my mouth and everything else as I, as I, uh, so I'll be speaking truth to people and not Michael Pretty Man opinions. And, uh, but God, we thank you for the scripture and uh, I just, uh, I'm grateful that we can come here tonight and that uh, on this Labor Day and we thank you for this holiday. But God, um, I speak on behalf of everyone listening right now when I tell you that we love you, God. We thank you for the gift of salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. Again, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. All right. I know, Peggy, I didn't have my food tonight. I, that's the one thing I thought of I, on Labor Day. You'd think I, like, I'd have a rack of ribs right here eating. I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some food next week. I was in a hurry tonight, and I didn't get any food, so I'm starving over here. So uh, <laughs> anyway, y'all have, have a good night, and uh, take care, and we'll see you on Wednesday and Sunday. See you. Bye.